Hey guys, it's Carmen from Curious Chicks and today I'm going to talk to you about Barcelona. If you're planning to go to Barcelona and you only have three or four days to go there, there are some definite must-see places that you need to go to. So I'm going to talk about four of them and I'm going to give you a few pointers about each of them. The first place I'm going to talk to you about is La Sagrada Familia. Of course, that is probably, arguably, the most visited place in Barcelona and possibly all of Spain. La Sagrada Familia is a beautiful church, highly intricate, highly detailed, and it was designed by Gaudi. Now, one thing you need to know about visiting La Sagrada Familia is that you need to book your tickets in advance, especially if you're going during high season. You can book your tickets in advance up to three months before the date. Uh, that you'd like to go and you're gonna want to do that online and you can either book it through a tour or you can book it directly on the official website. When you're booking your tour, a lot of times either the tour company or the actual website, you have to pick the actual date and time slot that you're going to visit the church. And it's much better to visit in the morning as early as possible so you can avoid all the huge crowds because this place gets really, really busy. One thing that I highly recommend is that you book your tour with a tour group. Now there are many different options for booking your tour. I chose to take the tower tour, which has a tower viewing option and also a tour of the actual church. But I really didn't enjoy the tower view. I thought that it was a very small enclosed space. You can't really see a lot of the viewpoints that well. So for the price, I don't think there was much value in going up to the tower. But the actual church tour was really awesome and you should definitely spend a lot of time after the tour exploring the intricacies of the church. When I booked my tour, I opted for a tour from a third party company. But I think if I were to do this again, I would probably just do the tour of the church with a real person or an audio guide and just skip the tower altogether. One thing for you to expect is that there's a lot of construction going on and the church is actually not finished and won't be finished until close to 2030. So expect to hear a lot of noise. Like La Sagrada Familia, Casa Batyo is another one of Gaudi's famous works. And this place is fun, it's full of imagination, unique, and I thought it was really cool. At the time the Batyo family owned the property, they hired Gaudi to design their house from the inside out. So what you need to know about Casa Batyo is, yes, you need to buy tickets ahead of time, especially if you're going during high season, so you can skip the lines and avoid the huge crowds. When you're purchasing your tickets to visit Casa Batyo, you're probably going to want to buy the ticket that includes the fast pass that allows you to skip the lines and go ahead of everybody else so you can get in there much quicker. I found the audio guide actually pretty neat. It's called a smart guide and it's an augmented virtual reality of what the place looked like back in the days. So it will speak to you and tell you what happened in the, each of these rooms, but then you can look through the view of a little small camera and it'll show you exactly what the place looked like and I thought that was really neat. What's nice about this audio tour is that you get to go at your own pace. So if you want to stay one hour or two hours, that's totally up to you. But for me, I gave myself about an hour to go through it and that seemed to be plenty of time. The third attraction is Park Well and that place is a beautiful park and it was also designed by Gaudi it was owned by an industrialist and he hired Gaudi to design this whole park. Park Guell is most notably known for its gingerbread-like homes, its terrace and mosaic work. You're gonna wanna buy your ticket ahead of time because it gets really crowded, especially during high season. And that ticket allows you to get into the monumental zone which gives you access to above and below the terrace. In the monumental zone on the main terrace, there is that iconic view that you see in everyone's travel photos and you can take a bunch of selfies and a lot of pictures there. But what people don't really know is that Parkwell is more than just this monumental zone. It's a huge, huge park. There's a lot of dirt roads, there's a lot of little trails that you can go up into the hills, and there's a museum, there's a small house, there is a lot of vegetation, and there are also a bunch of stone pillar columns, a lot of gouty work that you don't normally think of when you think of Parkwell. So when you go to Parkwell, make sure that you have the appropriate shoes because there's a lot of dirt roads and there's actually a lot of stairs too. So I did a group tour through Parkwell and I thought it was well worth the extra 7 euros to hear someone tell me more about the history of the park. Parkwell is not the easiest place to get to. You can take the train and then walk there, but it's not that easy so you might want to just opt to take a taxi there. But Parkwell is definitely in the top four, so make sure you take the opportunity to visit that park 
and see all of its amazing architectural work. The last place is Montserrat, and that's a beautiful monastery up in the hills in the mountains outside of Barcelona. It's going to take you about an hour to get there. Montserrat is a nice escape from the city. There are less people, it's much calmer, has beautiful views of the hills and the mountains outside of Barcelona, so you'll definitely want to check this place out. If you go to Montserrat, you should plan on being there for at least half a day or possibly even a full day depending on whether you do hikes. If you're going to Montserrat for the first time, it might seem a little confusing on how to get there. But it's actually not that bad. What you would do is you would take the public metro line to a certain stop and then from there you have two options. One is you would take the rail rack which is a private train that takes you from that stop up to Montserrat. Or two, you can take the Skyride, which will also do the same. There are a lot of different things to do once you get up to Montserrat. First, there's a museum. The museum has a lot of old paintings in there, so if you like that kind of thing, then it might be good to visit. There are also funiculars, and if you don't know what that is, they're the short distance trolleys that get you from point A to point B to different viewpoints around Montserrat. Also, if you plan to take a hike, sometimes those funiculars can shorten your hike time. If you're going to be at Montserrat for a half a day or even a day, you're probably going to eat while you're there. I highly recommend the buffet lunch at restaurant Montserrat because they got high quality food and they have a pretty good selection. It's just not something you would expect at a tourist spot. Another thing you can do while you're at Montserrat is go on a hike and there are many hiking trails up there. Some of them a lot easier than others but a hike is definitely going to make your day a full day instead of a half day. So just be prepared that if you're going to hike that you have enough time to hike the trail as well as visit all the other sites of Montserrat. I purchased the All Montserrat package which include the rail rack, the funiculars, the buffet lunch at Montserrat, and also the museum and the audiovisual space. So I thought the All Montserrat package was a really good deal because you got everything included as well as being able to see the beautiful monastery and everything it has to offer. Other than these four attractions, you might want to check out Casa Mila, which is another one of Gaudi's architectural works. But there are so many other things to do in Barcelona, but these are the four that I think you must do if you only have a few days to go there. If you want to learn more about Barcelona, there's a part two to this video which discusses entertainment, shopping, and food. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if there are any other attractions that you think are a must-see. And subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.